people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Today's, let the kids know, today's gospel lesson, Jesus gives a sermon. Did you know Jesus did some sermons kind of like this? He would talk to people. Now, he had a few more people than are here. But this time, he did something they called the Beatitudes. All right, that's a nice big word for what I like to say. It's a way that he would like us to be thinking. What he would like us to do, he says, blessed are these people that try to keep peace. Blessed are people that need help because he will send people that will help them. What Jesus is really talking about all the time is he wants us to think of other people. What do they need? What can I do, maybe, to make them feel better? How can we help them? So he wants us to always help others. It can be little things, for maybe we open the door for somebody that has trouble with the door. Maybe it's just saying hello to somebody. Maybe it's a smile. Maybe it's picking up a phone during this pandemic and calling a grandma or a grandpa or friends you haven't talked to. But Jesus wants us thinking all the time about other people and how we can improve their lives. So when I hear the Beatitudes, I say it a little different. He wants me to be and live with this attitude, which is the love of other people. So today, if you get a chance, go ahead and just try to be nice and help somebody in whatever way you can. In Jesus' name. John in the third chapter, 
Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him. For so we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him, purify themselves just as he is revealed. This is the word of the Lord. It's fine. For right now. Do you want my laptop? Go back to the first lesson, which is from the book of Revelation, which we don't do a lot of reading about, um, do our lectionary series from the book of Revelation. Most people will think immediately of the end times. Most people will think of the trial and tribulation before the end of Christ returns the second time. That's what normally comes about when you think of Revelation. But if we look at this image that is being painted for us by John, it is something totally different. It is where we are all worshiping with God, where we are in the presence of God, in the presence of Christ. There will be a new city, a new way of doing life, so to speak. It will be one where, as it says in here, the hot scorching sun will not be beating down on us as we think back to August and September of this year here in Florida. That will be a wonderful blessing indeed not to have that hot sun. But we will be with Christ. Everything will be new. And I think it's appropriate on this day that we remember the saints and we think of them often with tears. There will be a day when there will be no more tears. And there will be a day when we will be united with all of those that have gone before us. The second reading is how blessed and how happy we should be thinking of ourselves, that we're children of God, that God has adopted us, that God has called us into his world, and he wants to be with us, and we get to be with him. It's a blessing. One that we overlook, I think, a lot of times. Even though we may not be or able to purify ourselves, Jesus is doing that for us. So that like the saints before us, we will all be together with Christ. Let's stand and prepare our hearts and our minds for reading of the gospel. <laughs>
because all who repent and ask for the forgiveness are saints. That's who saints are. I know we've gone out there and we've thought about it. Who are those people? But let's look at what it means to be a saint. Saints are the ones that are asked for forgiveness. It's granted through the mercy and grace of Jesus Christ. Saints are set aside to do God's will. If you read the Bible, that's all of us. All of us are set aside to do God's will. That's another requirement, another thing that they do. So all of us, we've ever asked for forgiveness, ever talked about God. We are indeed the saints. So what are some of the characteristics of saints? I know when I was growing up, the characteristics of these saints were somebody that was just way up here, was it not? Maybe uh, some kind of a heavenly being. Maybe this you know, person who just glowed in white like Jesus did when he was transformed on the top of the mountain. They never did anything wrong. They were these perfect people that somehow we wanted to try to look up to because we could never emulate. We can never be a saint ourselves. I got looking at the saints. And there's about five different characteristics that kind of are common to them. The first is they seek to do God's will. The second, saints are not perfect, and I'll explain that in a little bit. Saints' love is for everyone. There is no distinction. They love everybody. Saints are risk takers. I don't know if you really thought about that, but they are. And the saints are actually humble individuals. So let's take a look at these. The first one, saints seek to do God's will. Now, okay, when we think of these perfect people, these perfect beings, you know, if I say the name Mother Teresa, okay. what comes to mind? We think of a very loving, giving individual. At least baseball. An individual At least baseball. that helped the poor that was surrounding her. She gave constantly. Well, if you read some of the stories about Mother Teresa, there are times that she does get upset. But her overall goal is to always do what God asked her to do. When we look at all the saints in the Bible, the same thing. They all have one goal. That's to take God's word, put it into their hearts, and then go out and share it with everybody. Give it to everybody else. Their joy becomes giving it away. Their joy becomes in doing things for other people. So the first thing is, and I know it's kind of one of those dumb moments, is to do God's will. The second, the saints are not perfect. How many of you have ever heard of St. Paul? How many of you have heard of St. Peter? A couple of little facts about these two. Do you know what Paul did? Paul murdered people. Peter, the great rock the church was built on. He was standing listening to Jesus. Jesus is telling him, I'm going to go to Jerusalem. I'm, they're going to kill me. Three days I'm going to come back. Peter's remark is, I'm not letting that happen, Lord. What's Jesus' response to him? Get behind me, Satan. That's a saint. Peter and Paul had, shall we say, a discussion about who or should the Gentiles be ministered to. And if so, how? And when I say a discussion, if you read the articles about it, it was anything but a discussion. It was rather a heated argument between the two. Went over a great period of time before they both came together and understood that God was calling them to do something new and different. But there was conflict. Saints are not perfect people. Saints stumble. Saints fall. Saints miss opportunities that God places before them. But if we go back and remember, it is an individual that has repented and asked for the forgiveness and still gets back up off the carpet and goes forth again. That is a saint. So if you're thinking to yourself, I remember all the saints that have gone before me from my family, for other families, or from the biblical people, and think, I can never be that. 
you're wrong. It's not about being perfect. The definition in the Bible of a saint is not a perfect individual. It's an individual that does God's will. It's an individual that has a heart after God, that seeks God. It's about sanctification. It's very rare for it to happen like what it did to Paul, where one moment he was persecuting the Christians, to the next moment he has a face-to-face -face and a heart-to-heart -heart with Christ, and then he goes forth and changes. Most of them, it's a transformation called sanctification. It's where God finds us right now, and God says, I can use this individual. That's a saint that says, use me. That's a saint. The third one up here, agape love. And agape is defined as pure, willful, sacrificial love that intentionally desires another's highest good. And please, folks, I want to get that button. <laughs> that are intentional. Notice the word intentional. Agape love says, I love you. Not in a romantic way, not in an emotional way. It may become that. It may grow into a deep, emotional, abiding, caring, and compassionate love. But it's intentional. A saint intentionally goes out. Again, if we think of Mother Teresa, where did she live? She lived among the poor. She lived among the sick. She didn't have to. She chose to do that. Paul. Okay. chose to go into cities where they persecuted him. He was beaten. He was stoned almost to death. And yet he still got up, and still he went into those facilities. He went into the temples knowing that most of the temples that he's going to go into, they're probably going to end up throwing him out at one point or another. But he intentionally wanted them to hear it. He wanted them to hear the good news. It's not about your laws, it's not about your regulations, it's about Jesus Christ. He wanted to go. Peter didn't quit after Jesus called him Satan. He got up. He kept learning, he kept following him. And he eventually got it, he eventually understood it. And God came to him and said, you, Peter, you, Peter, the one that is not perfect, you, Peter, that always opens your mouth before you think, you, Peter, I'm going to build my church on it. That's a saint. God says the same thing to each and every one of you. You are the one. You may be. You may be the one saint to somebody that you don't even recognize or understand they're looking at you. You may be that one person's inspiration for change. It's not about seeking to grow a huge church. It's not about seeking to get all kinds of accolades. It's about we bring one person, one person to Christ. We've done God's will. We've sought him out. We've known what a God we love. The other one is they are risk takers. Paul knew the Paul knew the consequences for going into the Jewish temples. Mother Teresa knew the living condition she was going into. We look around the world today, and it has not been that long ago that we read the headlines where Christians were killed because of their faith. And they still are in the world. It is not wrong that we're even, I'm not, it is wrong, but we are persecuted even in this country at different times in the wrong category, quoted the wrong place for saying Jesus Christ is the only way. Jesus Christ is the truth and the light. You've got to be a risk taker in some groups to say that. You've got to be a risk. You've got to want to go up there and say, you know what, my love for Jesus is stronger than my fear for what you can do to me. And you can't, you can kill me physically. You can wound me physically. That's okay. Because you can't kill the soul. You can't keep me from Jesus Christ. And again, that one example, that one example may inspire and save somebody else. That's a saint. Take the risk. The other part are the saints are humble. And I will say, yesterday I had the opportunity to work among saints. And I'm sure if you asked each person that was here yesterday, are you a saint, they would look at me and say, no, I'm not. I would argue back and say, yes, you are. Morgan, when you
Would you like to stand up here like you did yesterday at the very end after going ahead and power washing everything? Actually, yeah, kind of. It was uh, fun. Yeah, kind of. It was fun. She was covered in mud from head to foot. <laughs> oh, no. It should have seen that. It was great. <laughs> I, I know yeah. most people don't think that's great. <laughs> Spencer's walking around again. Maybe it was a cancer causing agents to kill all those weeds, Spencer? Something like that. Sue. Jennifer. Helen and all of them out in the hot sun putting up crosses Pony. so that we can celebrate. Huh? Connie, too. It was hot, wasn't it? Who Pony. else? Connie. Connie, you're right. Thank you. I was trying to remember. And Connie was here in the hot sun. You should have seen them. They came in here and they looked like little drowned rats. They were sweating. But one of them told me, why do we do this? Why? We do it so when everybody shows up, they're not concentrating on a dirty sidewalk or a slippery sidewalk. They're not concentrating on the mud all over the white pits out there. They're able to concentrate and say thank you to God. That's what saint does. They do it behind the scenes. How many different people have come in, even during the pandemic, and dropped off food in the back here? For those children that are homeless and need food. I've gotten phone calls from people who watch this online and say, can I donate for you? Can I give you this money so that if you know of a family, if you know of an individual, and I am saying that now, if you know of an individual or a family that is in need, let me know. There are people behind the scenes. Those are saints. They are intentionally saying, I don't know who's in need. I don't need to know who's in need. I don't need to know if they're short, tall, skinny, fat, white, black, green, yellow. I don't need to know all that. All I know is I believe in Jesus Christ. There is somebody out there hurting. Let me give you the money to help them. That's a saint. I don't know anything else about the person. For all I know, they may go home and yell at the dog every night. Still a saint. They're still willing to give. They're willing to go out there and ask no recognition. There are so many other people here in this church. I wish I had the memory to remember everybody that does things from behind the scenes to taking care of our renters, to taking care of the tech team here, from doing communion, from going out and buying these cups so that we can have communions, for the people that made the mask that you see. Every day, every week, there are so many things going on behind the scenes. From how many hours this guy put in. These are saints, folks. They're no different than any of us sitting here. For each one of you has stepped up at different times and in different places when God has placed it on your heart, and you have helped others. You are all saints. We are called by God. We are set by God. The Beatitudes, they encapsulate everything that Jesus wants to be thinking about. Jesus in the Beatitudes is talking about the reversal of the roles, that the poor one day will be blessed. They will no longer be poor. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those people that are humble. That's what God wants. People that are seeking God. Some may be really out there and in front, you know. Some are behind the scenes. Some are on the sides of the scenes. But go read the Beatitudes, and they'll give you the attitudes that God wants us to have. Blessed are the poor, and I've gone over some of these. Blessed are you when you, revile, when you are reviled and persecuted and utter all kinds of evil against you. Let them say evil, because it's not about us. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about God. Somebody says, I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time, or I've said, I've done the wrong thing. Okay, same thing with you. Okay. It's about lifting up God for all people. Saints say living the way we are living right now is not acceptable. We live in a world, and I'm going to talk about the world in a whole, that thinks about our own personal comforts first. No, it's about other people. You really want to be happy? Go do random acts of kindness and do them in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what it's about. 
Mother Teresa said, these people are poor. They have nobody that's going to minister to them. That's wrong. I'm going to go there and I'm going to be the one. Who knows where God's calling each and every one of you right now to go and minister in a place that you would think, oh, Lord, no way. God may be calling you. He wants you to go out. We must create a more compassionate and forgiving world. We are the ones that it starts with. It's not with the media. It's not with a politician. It's not with a government official. It's not with anybody else. It is us. If you're waiting for somebody else to create a better world, it's never going to happen. It starts with us, with our families, with our friends, with our church members, and with our community. Blessed are those going to be D and your daughter Tuesday. Is it going to be fun? No. <laughs> For those that don't know, D and your daughter will be here all day Tuesday as a bowling precinct. But they do it as a ministry to the church. They donate what they get paid to pay back to the church. That's a saint. That's making a difference. So everybody that comes in through those doors has the opportunity to vote. They're making a difference now. We are not the future saints. Believe it or not, all of us sitting here, somebody will look up to us at some day, some point in our time, and say, you know what? You are the saints. You were my saint. You were the one that I looked up to. It's going to happen. One day it will. There is a responsibility for saying I believe in Jesus Christ. Accept it. Live up to it. Jesus has called you. Make no mistake about it. He has asked you to go out. He isn't asking for you to be perfect. But he is asking you to be the saint somebody needs in their life. He is asking you to love that individual intentionally. He is asking you to do things you may not think you're capable of doing, but trusting that he is doing it, having no clue if what you are doing is right or wrong, but you're doing it with a good and loving heart. That's how we change the world. We try it and we do it anyways. You are the saints. Yes, the name says all saints. And it's time that each and every one of us grasp that, hold on to it, accept it, embrace it, and celebrate it. Because I'm going to say it one last time and then I'm done. You are somebody's saint. Go out and live it. Be that saint. Not perfect, but loving. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.
Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The prayers of our church. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs who sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Countless men and women have risked and given the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Comfort those who mourn their loss. Help to heal those who have returned and still carry the burden of difficult and painful memories and injuries. Continually protect and guard all who are currently serving, especially Travis, Andy, Cole, Robert, Carrie, Nicholas. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red state and blue state, rural voters and urban voters, young and old as we share in another national election. May we seek ways to bridge our differences and find ways to fulfill our common needs. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. great. Lord of every blessing, your son bless your son's blessing coming to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, persecution, shape our vision of saints to match his own. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. Sustain all who suffer. Assure all in need of your presence. Heal their pain and suffering. Embrace all who are aching for wholeness of mind, body, and soul. We lift up to you all who are in need of your healing touch, especially Paul, Brenda, Bruce, Carol, Shelby, Steve, Carol, Guido, Helen, Joe, Alicia, Esther, Giselle, Josephine, Stephanie, the and family, Martha, Kelvin, Carol, Jonathan, Troy, Carlos, Maria, Jordan, Alice, Anastasia, Abigail, Cynthia, Tom, Nadine, Christina, Karen Garcia's brother, Haven, Pastor George, Maverick, Jenny, Jeffrey, Roy, Louis, Risa, Karen, Norm, Margie, Julian. Lord, in your mercy. We are pray. Lord of every time, countless are the multitudes you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year. In faith, may we join with them in ceaseless praise. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy, mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when we gather all creation around you, your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. you.
which were first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, to Christ our Lord. In the blessedness of your saints, you have given us a glorious pledge of hope and of our call that moves by their witnesses and supported by their fellowship. We may run with perseverance the race that is set before and with them receive the unfading crown of glory. And so with the church on earth, the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen.
God. You gave your son both as a sacrifice for sin and a model of a godly life. Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving, to conform our lives through his, to the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be glorious to you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. No. <laughs> no one but you cares. Oh, gosh. The women of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, synodical women in the state of Florida, we normally hold our fall gathering in November. Couldn't do that this year because of pandemic. However, a few of us, well, it's been a lot of us, got together and we have decided to give everybody a mini fall gathering. It is up and running on our website, www.flwelca. -E Please visit it. Everything's not going to be up at the, the same time. There will be a worship service, live worship service on Saturday the 14th of November. And on the 13th, we will be doing a Bible study. But periodically, up until that time, there are other things you can click on. It'll tell you exactly when it's on. I have a message for you with my co-chair and the president. That's up and running right now. And our first person who's going to give us one of the workshops that would normally be given will be up today. If you have any questions, please give me a call. We are so excited. We hope you enjoy. Any other announcements? If you want to be on council next year, feel free to let me know, and I will get you down. Don't even worry about it. No council. So I hear a volunteer? I'm an encourager. Oh, I heard a volunteer. He's a supporter. <laughs> May all the saints go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.